Hello world, I'm Chris Perillo, and you're watching another live Q&A with you and me, and I have to do it again because the thing did not go. Frack. Damn it, I'm so tired of going back and doing this. Hello world, I'm Chris Perillo, and you're watching another live Q&A with you and me, streaming these directly into this channel. You can watch the live videos if you become one of the patrons, aka the Super Nomies. Other than that, you're one of my Nomies, so thank you for your support in whatever way you choose to give it. I've been answering questions about what is the gadget I should buy, but that's kind of a general topic because there are so many gadgets out there. Are you looking for a certain type of gadget? Let me know. I might have a recommendation to make any future video, and I'll be sure to give you the credit if you ask me a question that I have an answer for. Today, it's about the best wireless keyboard that I've ever used, that I've ever found, and spoiler alert, it's in the video right now. And in case you haven't done your research on the Apple wireless keyboard, in recent versions, it only takes two AA batteries as opposed to three in the original wireless keyboards that I used from Apple. And you can also get the uh, the keyboard to work in uh, in uh, um, uh, a video I want to redo. Here we go. Take two. Hello world, I'm Chris Perillo, and you're watching another live Q&A with you and me. You could watch this live without ads if you become one of the patrons, aka the Super Nomies. Everybody else gets this video a week after it's produced, so either way, I'm happy you chose to support me. Uh, I've been answering questions around the topic of what gadget should I buy, since this seems to be a popular term. This is the... Okay, if I'm going to do it again, I'm just going to do it again. This is it. This is it. I swear to God. Hello world, I'm Chris Perillo, and you're watching another live u and with Q and me, or something like that. <laughs> uh, I, I'm doing this live, and you know what, I'm just going to keep rolling forward because that's how live works. We'll do it live! We'll do it live! I'm doing it live. For my patrons at least, everybody else gets this video a week after it's produced, and uh, so thank you for whichever way you choose to support the things that I'm doing for you. I've been answering questions around the topic, which gadget should I buy? But there are so many gadgets out there that I don't really know how to narrow it down. So I'm doing my best at guessing in terms of general categories, but you have a certain idea for what kind of gadget you're looking for, at least a category for it, I might have an answer. I might have already recorded that answer in video, at which point I'm probably going to say I, I already answered that question, uh, but if it's a category that I have not covered yet, or at least recently, let me know. I might be able to address it for you. Today's category is wireless keyboards, and uh, for me, it's not just the wireless keyboard, it's the keyboard in general, and I'll explain a, a little bit as to why I, I've taken the approach that I've taken with my choice for keyboards as well as wireless keyboards. I've used so many keyboards going all the way back to the beginnings of keyboards. I learned how to type on a typewriter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like not even a typewriter that you had to plug in in order to get to work. It had a ribbon and everything. Of course, I had an electric typewriter too, and that had a ribbon. But I, okay, I've been typing for a long time. And certainly, keyboards have evolved over the years. One of my favorite keyboards, they don't make anymore, but I guess it's a thing to collect the old IBM keyboards. Like, they had such an amazing uh, action to them. Bang, 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 bang. Every key you hit, it was so incredibly loud. And <laughs> I grew up in an era where we had computer labs. And it was wonderful to be in the computer lab because you would have the noise, which would normally be a cacophony of sound, but it was... A symphony to me, uh, hearing dozens upon dozens of people just typing away on these keyboards that were so incredibly loud. I loved that sound. In fact, I'm surprised no one has come up with a, some kind of soundtrack that you can play in the background on an app of people clacking away at those old keyboards. So I've been using them for a, a long freaking time. I uh, have evolved as keyboards have certainly evolved and have come to discover that uh, one of my favorite wireless keyboards is, no surprise here, if you watch my videos regularly, uh, it's Apple's wireless keyboard. This is a newer edition of the wireless keyboard. The older ones took uh, three AA batteries. Uh, these only take two AA batteries, so that's kind of nice. Uh, so they improved them over time. But uh, even if you're a Windows user, you can still figure out a way to use Apple's keyboard. Of course, you could also 
you know, run Windows in OS X's boot camp or potentially in Parallels virtualization software on OS X to run Windows outright. But uh, when I've talked to uh, my friends who are Windows users, they're a little hesitant to get an Apple product. This is not Apple software. This is hardware. And out of all the wireless keyboards that I had used to this point, it didn't take much getting used to, not just the layout, even on OS X, because obviously it's not going to have a Windows key. It's not, you know, from uh, uh, from Microsoft or, you know, for a, a PC or Windows outright. Nor might the function keys work in anything apart from OS X. But the response of these keys and the layout and the feel, and I mean, not, not just the size and the depth, you, you, uh, you can't type too fast anymore. And that used to be a problem. This may be something very difficult to explain to people, but one of the reasons why we have the QWERTY layout, some people have gone to Vorak, um, and there are certainly other layouts as well, but one of the reasons we have this layout was specifically to slow down typing, because back in the day with typewriters, the layout of the keys were such that if you type too quickly, the, the, they would jam, like the keys would jam, like pfft. Like that, psh, they'd do this. Psh. And I remember, because I used to jam my keys all the time. Well, they didn't call them keys. The little uh, prongs uh, that would, you know, go out and, and basically press the uh, the ribbon or the ink on the ribbon onto uh, the page. There was no undo button. Mm -mm, we didn't have that. No backspace key. Electronic keyboards, they had backspace keys. Uh, but uh, we're not talking about that. We're talking about wireless keyboards. Sorry, I'm, j I, I'm just, you know, wanting to talk through this here. Because I'm just trying to give you context. I've been doing this for years. Uh, I've talked to people who don't use OS X, who don't like Apple, who love Apple's keyboard. Not just because of the layout, but because uh, it, it's it's something that I don't know what they did in terms of engineering. Because the, the Apple wireless keyboard that came before this one sucked. It was horrible. The keys were mushy. Uh, I couldn't type quickly. I was constantly clunking over myself. But uh, I came to appreciate this quickly after I realized that my typing speed improved and I didn't do anything apart from change my keyboard. I'm not a gamer at all. I would never really use that label for myself. Now, if you want to call me a retro gamer, fine, but it's, it's not for me. So obviously, I don't think this topic is, is covering specifically ret or retro, retro or gaming or anything with a gaming keyboard. It's about a wireless keyboard for general productivity. Uh, I would not have much experience with gaming keyboards, so you're probably not going to get that response from me. I'd have to talk to a fellow friend who, a fellow friend, a fellow, a friend who had experience. Um, this improved my typing speed, and I'm not the only one who said that. It's uh, It's got a great action. Uh, the keys are, are laid out such that you can fly through uh, anything that you needed to type out. Uh, you know, I've got muscle memory, of course, by now, and that, I think, is the bigger value of using Apple's wireless keyboard if, if you have other Apple hardware, and here's why. Because the keyboard layout is pretty much the same. So as I move from my iMac using this wireless keyboard or uh, using this wireless keyboard and connecting it by way of Bluetooth to another device that supports Bluetooth keyboards, I don't have to retrain my memory uh, or I guess, you know, go and, and, and adjust myself and say, oh, I'm using a different keyboard and I can't type as quickly. When you're used to a certain process, it improves over time. And as you switch systems, you're going to lose something in the process and it's just, it's going to happen. Muscle memory is very, very important. And what I quickly discovered is, oh, on my MacBook Pro, it's got the same, not just layout, but same spacing, same action, same everything. So I can seamlessly jump from system to system with the same type of keyboard. Not just the same keyboard, but specifically the same layout. And that is something that is not to be understated. That is very valuable if you have more than one system. So it's just another reason why I, I've appreciated having Apple's wireless keyboard. And I have a feeling that even if I was not using OS X as much as I uh, am using OS X, because I use other operating systems as well, I think I would be just as better served by this keyboard, not needing too many fancy function keys outright. Uh, control, Alt, and uh, you know everything else is kind of a bonus for me, unless, of course, you're using OS X outright and then you have different function keys. But uh, it, was, it, it was something that was immediately palpable. One of my first system shots that I had back in the day, uh, in fact, I remember someone saying, it was a beautiful setup. What I had here when I first got the Tix clocks and I had my two big screens right here uh, and I had glow coming from the back and I just, it was it, it looked beautiful. Up here, it looked beautiful. It was clean, relatively uncluttered, uh, uncluttered. 
this is where I get my work done, so I don't really want to stare at a lot of stuff back here. So I, uh, uh, I, I noticed a comment that said, why does anybody have to take down the beauty of this desk setup with a clunker keyboard? And I, I, I looked and I was like, oh yeah, it was like the classic Microsoft keyboard, a wired keyboard, uh, one of my favorites. I think they called it the Internet Pro keyboard. What I loved about that keyboard, it was not wireless. What I loved about the keyboard is it had two additional USB ports. This is back in the day when that was a premium, right? You know, you would always need an extra USB port for something. And it worked well. Uh, I could connect it to the computer by way of a variety of connections other than wireless. And then I had a couple of additional USB ports if I chose to use the USB uh, uh, attachment. So I wasn't losing a USB port by connecting that USB device. I was actually gaining two. Uh, that was the best keyboard that I can uh, could ever consider using. I never really got used to the ergonomic keyboards that anybody made. I, I feel that the, the downfall of so many keyboards are the mushiness of keys. Mushy keys slow me down. I do not like mushy keys at all. At all. Do not like them. Do not want. Mm -mm, not for me. Uh, and, you know, this is based on my experience. And uh, I, I guess it would be very difficult for me to move to another keyboard. I wanted to move to the Optimus Pro. Remember the, what, no, what was not Optimus Pro, uh, Maximus, Optimus, Optimus Mac, Optimus Maximus. That was the name of it. And each key had an OLED screen. And this was really cool back in the day. I still have it. I was going to give one away or give it away to someone who reached uh, on LockerGnome.net, the first one to reach 100,000 points, and no one ever really got that far, sadly. But uh, I still have it. Maybe, uh, maybe I could do that as a video highlight in a future video if I can get it working again. That's a big question mark if it would still work again, but it was really cool. Uh, it was all the rage. This is long before Kickstarter, and it was wonderful because each key could be reprogrammed to a different graphic. It was really, really neat. The problem was it was expensive, and the key action was absolutely horrific. I mean, nasty, nasty, nasty. I, I, could, not, I could not type on that. Not regularly, not uh, for uh, productivity in, in any way, shape, or form. But it was a cool idea. Great idea. Uh, decent implementation, but horrible usability as an, an actual uh, keyboard. So, uh, yeah, does anybody else remember that? Lebedev, I think, was the last uh, name of the, the product company, Art Lebedev. It's been a while since I've even looked at one. Boy, now you got me wanting to pull it out. Fine, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it live. I'll do it live. Uh, so there's my choice. And, of course, other talking points in this live video. I do love talking. And if you don't like that, you're probably going to hate this channel. But I hope you don't. I hope you like the uh, the, def the the defert. The defert's not even a word, but I just made it up right now. You can come up with a definition for the def defert. <laughs> Thank you for uh, everything that you're doing so that I can do what I do for you. At this point, I'm going to wrap up, move on to TLDR. It's an AMA today. I just finished a CPU episode for the other channel, the classic channel, Chris Perillo. Yeah, we got other stuff going over there. Edited videos. So like the anti-Chris Perillo channel, still starring Chris Perillo, a geeky variety show every weekday. Uh, okay, I'm done. I I'm going to leave you to your own devices.